Good day and welcome to another Monday segment of A Week at the Plot. And boy is it hot today. It's feeling particularly hot I think because we've had quite a lot of cool weather of late, certainly through August. And today it's saying it's been 35.8 degrees, it, no, 38.8 degrees in the shed. At the moment it says it's 34.6. I checked another thermometer that we got in the shade underneath the apple tree and that is reading 30 degrees at the moment. I'm not quite sure why that disparity is there. Do they measure in the shade or in the sun? I'm not sure. I think maybe in the shade. So that's why we might be told that we've got 24, 25 degrees and actually we're actually showing quite a few degrees more. And of course, because the shed has been closed up and because it's got plastic um, as its roof, corrugated plastic as its roof, it does heat up because the sun really does get in here. But yeah, you know, that's fine. Um, it does mean that I've needed to water the beetroot and the turnips again. And I've also watered the chard, the Swiss chard that I sowed yesterday. And in fact, even the other seeds that I sowed in trays and in modules, I've had to water those because the top of the compost was drying out. Oh, I've got a little sparrow here. No, it's a robin. Oh, bless. It's just on. Anyway, that's one of the benefits of having a, a glass, not glass, a, a clear roof. You can see things when, <laughs> when they land on your roof. And today I've been thinking more about seed saving again. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret. As you know, we lost all of our outside tomatoes this year and the ones that we had growing in the polytunnel didn't come to anything. They were shoots and we didn't have, they were side shoots that we rooted and we didn't have the weather at the right time for them to, to get away really. But... Can you see this little one? Actually, look, he's a bit... Is that focusing? No, it's a bit like alien. It's an alien tomato. But actually, do you remember the tomato volunteer that we had in the broad bean bed? And we took it home and we, we kept it at home and we looked after it. Well, it produced this tomato. And you know what? We're not going to eat it. We're going to save seeds from it. I'll most probably give it a little nibble to see if it tastes absolutely disgusting. It is a bit overripe, but there's a bit here which isn't. This is all soft here, as you can see, but here it's not. So I'm going to taste that bit there and we're going to save seeds from that. And the way we're going to do it is the way we always do it. We take out the seeds and put them into a glass jar with some water close off the glass jar and give it a bit of air each day. We do that. You might not need to do that um, if you're in a cooler, um, if yours is in a cooler place. Give it a shake every day. And after three, four, five days, it'll get quite sort of cloudy in there. And that means that the germination inhibitor, which is the gel around the tomato seed, has dissolved, has broken up has broken down, in fact, and um, you'll then be able to strain off the, the seeds. And we do have a video about it, but so has Vivi and so has Jane. So I'll put links below when I upload this to YouTube of our three seed saving videos, tomato seed saving videos. Vivi's also got a cucumber one, so um, we'll put that link in there as well. The other tomato that I'm going to be saving seeds from is this one. Now this one arrived um, thanks to Linda, who sent us a box of Heritage Isle of Wight tomatoes. And this variety was in there. I have no idea what this variety is. I have emailed the Isle of Wight tomato company to um, ask them what variety it might be. 
but it was so lovely. The fruits were so, so lovely that I've set this one aside still with its little bit attached there and I will let it ripen and save seeds from that. I mean, to be fair, we've got a whole host of tomato seeds from our Amish paste through to the um, emerald green cherry already for next year in our freezer. And that's something else that I wanted to mention. When you're doing seed saving, make sure that you save a good amount of seeds, not just the amount of seeds that you need for the following year's growing season. Because the following year you might have a bad year and you won't be able to save seeds from that. So for our brassicas, for our Portuguese cabbage, we have got seeds for about eight years from the ones that we saved. I think it was actually the spring of 2019, not 20, as I said. So we, we will have had about 10 years of seeds from one seed saving of the Portuguese cabbage. So when you're saving your tomato seeds, don't just save sort of two or three or four. Save, you know, a good many. And if you grow a lot of tomatoes, save enough for three or four years. And once you process them and dried them, keep them in a fridge in a um, in a packet, in a paper packet, preferably. And then within a something like a Tupperware, because they will last for years and years and years if you keep them in the fridge as long as you have saved them correctly in the first instance and made sure they're really dry. And that goes for, for most seeds as well. The, the more challenging seeds are parsnip seeds. Um, but you will have seen when we grew our parsnips last year, the parsnip seeds that we did save from our Guernsey half longs did actually do well for us. Parsley, uh, parsley, have I said parsley or parsnip? I meant parsnip, Guernsey half long parsnip. Have I said parsley? <gasps> parsnip, parsnip seeds, they do, they age quite quickly. So we get fresh seeds every year and um, I think it's best to do that. However, next year we're going to be sowing from some seeds that we still have left over from this year that have been in the fridge since January and we will be sowing fresh seeds as well of the same variety, which is going to be tender and true. So a highly scientific experiment already planned for next year. But I've been looking around the plot, as I've said before, and looking at what we're going to save in terms of beans and mange too, which have already been done and peas. And then I thought to myself, well, Brussels sprouts, I've not save Brussels sprouts seeds before and also this dazzling blue kale that we've got that is its first year for us this year just looks fantastic and tastes great and seems to a grow better than the Nero di Toscana stroke Cavolo Nero we have done before and b seems less um the, the the sort of snails and and cabbage whites don't seem to like it as much. Um, I've noticed that largely when we have had cabbage whites in the past, they've loved Cavolo Nero or Nero di Toscana. But these, even though we've had them netted, these they don't seem to like quite so much. So I'm thinking about which plant I may allow to go to seed in our Groninger Brussels sprouts. We've got, I think, about eight or nine. There's one that is looking particularly tall and strong. And I'm going to put a red ribbon around, tie it around the stalk of that Brussels sprout. And I'm going to look at the, I'm looking over here, I can't see through wood, but I'm going to look at this dazzling blue kale bed here as well and determine which is the plant that is doing the best and I'll look at saving seeds next year from that. Because you know what, if I can get eight or 10 year seeds from our Groninger Brussels sprouts, and if I can get eight or 10 year seeds from our dazzling blue kale, I will be a very happy person indeed. One other thing that I'm thinking of trying to save seeds from is the London market carrot that are just sitting in this bed outside here. 
it's not a I don't think it's a seed that is is that popular. We got ours from the Heritage Seed Library and I'm I'm looking to see if there's a carrot there that we can leave in that bed which will have new potatoes in it next year. So a carrot that we can leave at the side to go to seed next spring so that we can save seed from it for the following year's growth of London Market. We have enough London Market seeds for three rows again next year, but it would be lovely to be able to save our own seed from those London markets. It would be great to do it from the, the Lunar White as well and also from the Nantes, but I've got plenty of Lunar White seed and plenty of Nantes seed and they are easily um, buyable as well. You know, you can, you can see them on various sites. The London market is not quite so widely available. That's what I mean. So yeah, today has been about seed saving, seed saving thoughts in particular. And I think there'll be quite a bit of that over the coming weeks. And certainly just looking out here, I'm looking at the Amish deer tongue lettuce, which has gone to seed. And I'm looking at the, I'm not looking because I can't see it. X-ray eyes, I would need to see it. Over there, we've got some red lettuce that I'm not sure what variety it is because we were given it by um, our neighbors here. But a variety that did really well for us and has gone to seed. So I'm looking at saving seed later this week from that as well. But there we are. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to do a little bit of watering. It's just coming up to 20 past six now. And I have a key in my pocket. If I get it out. Oh, have I? No, I've put it up there. I have a key in, the, in my pocket or up there for new plot holders as well. I'm meeting them at 6.30. They've, they're the ones that I saw about a month ago and they're getting their key for their two plots here. So there's a, I think it's a half plot and a third of a plot. So yeah, it's great to be having new people. They're taking up their tenancy as from the 1st of October, but because the two plots that they're going to be taking on have already been vacated, they'll be able to start in September, which is great. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for this Monday segment and I'll see you again very soon for another A Week at the Plot. Bye. Good day. It is quiet here today. I can hear a goose or a swan or something in the background. But yeah, it's really quiet at the moment. Not sure if you can hear that. It is warm already. It's about 8.30, quarter to nine, nine o'clock, something like that. And it's already pretty warm. It's going to be a hot day today for the UK anyway, for UK standards. 
and I did check yesterday when when the weather people give us the forecast and we we hear about what temperature it has been it is actually the temperature how it was in the shade not in full sun so obviously if it says it's going to be 28 degrees as they say it will be today in full sun that will be well above 30 degrees so i've come down early to open up the polytunnel fully uh, because we've got carrots in there they don't like being too warm so I need to make sure that the polytunnel is open and then I come down at night and then just close it or push the door to so that there's about a six inch gap so it doesn't get too warm overnight in there either but yes and then the next thing was watering of course watering the things that need watering so the seedlings basically i watered the chard that i sowed directly in the ground as well hopefully underneath the ground they are doing things of course the first thing that i did was check well the second thing actually after watering the polytunnel the carrots in the polytunnel was to check whether any of the lettuce or chard in the polytunnel had germinated and it hasn't yet but isn't that what we all do? You know, you, you sow some seeds and then that's one of the first things you do the following day. You go and look to see if they've germinated. I've got a full desk day today, so it was good to come down here early and get that watering done. The Doing it this early will really mean that by the end of day, the top of the soil is going to be dry so slugs and snails will be less enticed to go across the dry soil yeah and i think i'm just going to sit here now and just take in five or ten minutes of quietness there's been a delivery at the the pub um so there was some rattling in the background when i was doing this that was a delivery at the pub that van is now going off so yeah I'm just going to sit here now and give myself five minutes or ten minutes of quiet see you again soon bye good day just a quick update but I think you can just about see germination from the lettuce and you know what I've turned this around and now I don't know which variety was which side what an error but yeah look you can see there's there's one at the back there and there's one there in the middle and one there as well so that's great nothing yet in the chard didn't really expect that but it's uh Another early start for me and another desk day, which actually is just as well because it's going to be 29 degrees today, apparently. Bit of watering. I won't show you that today. You saw that yesterday, but the, yeah, watering really everywhere. But what I did want to show you, oh, actually, I want to show you over here as well go through the jungle look a squash this was from the one that self seeded in this bed it may be a cheeky prince I'm not sure but what I did notice, oh, I've got a silken thread on my arm from a spider. Oh, that reminds me. Yesterday, we had a wasp spider on site, which I've never seen. I'll put a photo in here, but it looks really quite sort of dangerous because it's yellow and black. It's black with yellow stripes. But yeah, I'll put a photo in. But look, there's a cheeky prince from Jay. 
that's fabulous can you see the color on that if I go in can you see the color it's slightly creamy so I think that oh maybe that's another one in there there's no cheeky curry and these are definitely homestead sweetmeats I think there's a bigger one over there but yeah so delighted that under this cardoon is a cheeky prince gosh look at the bees happy bees in there not sure if you can see and look on the cardoon flowers I love how the the tiny little petals of the cardoon flower shift with the bees anyway we'll have a look this way today I'll leave it there gosh it's warm bye good day I just popped down to do some harvesting for supper this evening I've just picked the dazzling blue kale or some not the because there's a lot there so I've picked some of that um, further carrots these are not really nice actually there is oh 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 can you see there there is a little bit of um i was going to say allium leaf miner carrot root fly there and that happens when when we start pulling carrots the if the carrot root flies around they do sort of smell the scent and, and get in there but the damage we find in our beds is never really too bad and when i was what else am i gonna oh um potatoes some colleen potatoes I, i'm gonna go and fork some up in a moment i think we're gonna have either linda mccartney sausages or maybe country pies this evening not sure but one thing that it, it oh and when i came down it just so happened that um the prizes for the sunflower competition that i judged a few weeks ago were being given so i've been in those photos and handed over the the trophies there's fantastic little glass well not little they're about that big maybe 10 inches square 10, 10 inches round on a plinth uh, for our sunflower competition so that's the tallest and the largest sunflower head so so that was lovely so i was able to take part in that as well which was which was great i i did say look go ahead and do the 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 prize giving without me because i knew that i my day to day and in fact over the last few days has been really busy so i didn't want to postpone the prize giving but it, in, you know fabulous coordinated really well in the end synchronicity i call that and when i was um coming down here i also realized that i've still got some coriander there and giant italy seeds so i can still sow those so i'm going to do a tray of those in the polytunnel as well or a half tray and um one of the types of of lettuce is germinating in the polytunnel far better than the other type of lettuce i think on one side we've got about 10 germinated so, so far and on the other side we've only got one and that's interesting because that one was actually the first one to germinate so maybe i'm going to need to sow some more i'll i'll have a look on sunday and see what they're like and decide whether we've got enough or whether i'm going to sow some more doesn't really matter but then i got thinking about seeds again i was looking at the the <coughs> dazzling blue kale and i was looking at the portuguese cabbage and i just thought you know what they come from such tiny tiny seeds you know i mean that seed is like maybe one and a half millimeters across and it's created a portuguese cabbage leaf that is almost two foot square 
well, two foot oval, if you see what I mean. And, you know, we, we, uh, seeds are really precious. And, and I know I go on about heritage seeds and the, the seed banks that we have around and about the world. But, you know, seeds are really quite, quite special. And we, we need to think about them more and look after them. I know I say put your seeds in the fridge, but, you know, do please, if you groom, put your seeds in the fridge in a plastic airtight box because they will stay in there for quite a long time and still be viable. My phone is actually flashing at me saying I'm almost out of battery, so I better leave it there. Quite a quick one today, which is most probably just as well because I came to, I said to Richard, I'm going to be half an hour. And I've already been, I think, about 45 minutes and I haven't even dug up the potatoes yet. Oh, something else. <laughs> I was given a little present by a plot holder that, uh, that I, I was watering her, her plot while she was away. Oh, look, Lu Jin. Can you see that? Oh, I've got a little mermaid on it. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that lovely? Right, I am going to leave it there now and I will see you again very soon. Bye. Good day. It is Friday afternoon, four o'clock. It's not Cracker Jack. That would be five o'clock, wouldn't it? But I've, I've come down here today and I'm really pleased to see that the plot is looking pretty good. Even the bits that are dying back are looking good. The reason being, we have had quite a few deluges. Can you have deluges? Yes, I'm sure you can. Quite a few deluges of rain over the past 48 hours, really. It started about 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 8.30 on Wednesday. And we had some really heavy downpours then. We had some further heavy downpours between sort of one and two on Thursday morning and then this morning we were actually recording Sunday chat in the front room and as it got to the end of the recording of Sunday chat the skies darkened and the heavens opened and the water came down and it rained quite heavily for maybe about half an hour three quarters of an hour it had been there'd been heavy drizzle and light rain before that. So actually all the water that we have had today, I'm sure has really been able to penetrate down to six, eight inches below the surface. Of course, if you have an awful lot of rain when it's dry, that can, or where it's been dry for a very long time, that can, the, the water can just, you know, roll off. So it doesn't get into the ground. But I do know now that that water has got into the ground. One of the issues with that is with some of our carrots, and I've particularly noticed the lunar white, because they sit in relatively dry soil, we don't give them a, an awful lot of water at this time of year when they're fully grown. Some of them have split because they suddenly had an influx of rain and they've gone, mm, yeah, and their little sort of hairs that come off the, the carrot have gobbled up that, that water and there has been a splitting, as I say, particularly of the lunar white. But you know what? They're still absolutely perfectly edible, which is great. The next thing I did when I came down was, was go into, the, after looking at the plot, was to just go over to the polytunnel and open it up, let some cool air in there. Again, I don't want those carrots to get too too warm and water that bed because of course that bed in there in the polytunnel will not be watered and neither will the the seedlings so i then had a look at the seedlings and i'm glad that i opened up the polytunnel i think i will leave it open by about six inches this evening because the lettuce is looking a bit it seems to be growing a bit too quickly for my liking let me go and show you there's our lettuce. As you can see, as I said, I think yesterday, some of the lettuce, this side, which is one variety, has germinated far better than this side. But yeah, I didn't keep a, a note of which side was which. 
Well, in fact, I did. And then I took the label out, watered it and turned it around. And then I lost which side was which. But you can see how the seedlings are jumping forward to the light. And I think that's also down to the warmth in the polytunnel if the door isn't open. So I'm going to make sure that a, I do it that way so that they come back towards the front like that. Um, and B, I'm going to make sure that the polytunnel is open overnight so that it's cooler in here because they prefer that. What I also noticed when it comes to our chard, look, a little one there. So that has um, begun germination. I can't see any others at the moment in there, but I'm, I'm pleased to see that one has. I then went out, as we always do, to check on others. So I checked on the germination down here of the chard we also sowed there, and I can't see anything in there yet, though obviously out here it's been a little bit cooler. Oh. It is a nice view. I do like this, even without the tomatoes there. And these are these carrots i've given them a water they're all bending over a little but can you see they're beginning to get their true leaves there's quite a few true leaves coming on there so happy with that and at the moment i'm not seeing a huge amount being eaten by any slugs or snails and this is the story of today as you can most probably see the sun has now come out it's been a real mixed bag of a day. Oh, look at these zinnias. Aren't they lovely? Look at that. Isn't that just perfection? It's gorgeous. Oh, and there's more to come here. Look. Lovely. Is that a seed head? Is that a zinnia seed head? You know what I'm like for seed saving. Oh, I don't think I can take you too far that way because the sun is now so bright. Oh, one thing I did want to show you. the I noticed the Portuguese cabbage. These are our Portuguese cabbage seedlings. And over the last few days, they've really started taking off. But, oh, look. That must be pigeons. I think I'm going to put these. Oh, you see, I, I'd love to have trays with nets. So, you know, wouldn't it be great if you could get this, but in netting so that the water could get in, but things couldn't get onto them to peck them and it would keep out snails. Yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover this in a little bit of fleece somehow yeah I'm gonna get on and do that no I'm not in mourning for anything I realized I had some black netting like our green scaff netting in a shed so I've cut a piece off in fact two pieces because I thought I could get away with cutting smaller than I can actually, so I've had to use both bits anyway. But I've I've wrapped this netting around and I've used larger name tags, markers, as a lifter for the netting to stop it resting on the seedlings. Because even though I was quite happy for that to happen with the Portuguese cabbage and the other kale when they were plants, with these seedlings, I do want them to get away without any obstruction. So, you know what? I'm pretty pleased with that. It's also given me an idea for what I could do next year to improve on this. Right, I'm going to leave it there. There's a wasp flying around. I think he's trying to find some water. In fact, yeah, look. Can you see? Having a drink? Less. Yeah, pleased with that. I actually did find a snail. So 
I was blaming pigeons, but I think it was a snail. Anyway, they won't get in there now. Fingers crossed. Bye. Good day. Quite a breezy day today. You can hear the, the winds through the trees on quite a few occasions. What's that, susurration? Is that right? Is that susurration? Loving the colours. The beans on the left, we've got the, we've got some golden gate in there, which are sort of almost being hidden by the, the leaves that are turning golden now. But then we've got the red flecks or red flecked pods of the bird's egg horticultural. Yeah. There's an alarm going off at Ealing Hospital or the secure unit, I can hear. But I think I'm the only one down here at the moment. I didn't see anyone walking from home to here. That is very unusual, very, very unusual. It is about nine o'clock on Saturday morning. But yeah, still unusual because you've usually got dog walkers at that time. Anyway, I am going to get on with another little bit of seed sowing. I've decided that instead of sowing into trays, I'm going to sow the coriander and parsley into modules. So I filled up these modules, there's 15 here, with compost and I think I'll do nine of them with parsley and six with coriander. Just putting a few parsley, maybe three into each of these modules. There's some more at the back. That'll do. Now coriander. I'm noticing some of my coriander seeds are a bit broken. That one's only half. So that won't germinate. So I'm trying to pick out the full seeds. pressing them down with my fingers make sure that the seeds are well in contact now just topping them up tap them down, make sure that the top is in contact. And now I'm going to get a label, well, two labels. This side we have our parsley, this side we have coriander. So we'll see how they germinate over the coming week or fortnight. The char that we looked at yesterday where there was just one germination, there's about 10 that have germinated now. So, so that's great. That's the char that we sewed into modules just like these. Right, we'll leave it there for this week's A Week at the Plot. I think that's our last sewings actually for 
our growing year, which I consider October to September. And in front of us are Madeira maroon beans on the tower on the, the left of center, Golden Gate in the center, and then on the right we've got the scarlet runner beans that we received from Shaz many years ago and we'll be saving seeds from those as you know for next year and I think there's going to be some seed swapping at a local seed swap so we'll have plenty of seeds to swap right I'll leave it there and I'll see you on Planet Vegetaria if you watch us on Planet Vegetaria I'll be back there on Monday or I'll see you for another full upload of A Week at the Plot in a week's time if you watch on YouTube. Bye!